Hi, this is Nick Dawson, the Editor-in-Chief of Talk House Film, and you're listening to the Talk House Film Podcast. When you work in film, you often keep on bumping into the same people again and again. Actresses Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Melanie Linsky first met when Winstead was playing Mary Todd Lincoln in the historical romp Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, in which Linsky's then-husband, Jimmy Simpson, also appeared. Since then, their paths have crossed many times, but they've never been able to have a good, long, substantive conversation. The talk house tries to be, if nothing else, a force for good in the world. So when there was an opportunity to do a podcast with Winstead around the release of her new film, 10 Cloverfield Lane, we reconnected her with Linsky so they could finally sit down and really talk. Both Winstead and Linsky have been working solidly since their mid-teens. Linsky's first role was co-starring with Kate Winslet in Peter Jackson's Heavenly Creatures, while Winstead broke into the business with an episode of Touched by an Angel. Both are extremely versatile, so depending on your viewing habits, you might know the Melanie Linsky who played Rose for more than a decade on Two and a Half Men, or the one who's acted in Joe Swanberg movies and currently stars in the Duplass Brothers HBO show Togetherness. Winstead, meanwhile, is well known for genre and action movies. Final Destination 3, The Thing, Live Free or Die Hard, and Tarantino's Death Proof, but she's excelled in indies such as Smashed and Alex of Venice, and I personally rate her performance as Ramona Flowers in Scott Pilgrim vs. The World as one of my favourite this decade. Which is all to say, they've done a lot and have a lot of stories, so it feels like this is just scratching the surface. I'm just so excited that you're here because I feel like we've kind of known each other for a while Mm -hmm. because we run into each other a lot at different parties and events and random things and... But I've never actually been able to have like an in-depth conversation with you. I know. I'm so excited yeah. that you wanted to talk to me. Yeah. I love it. You're really the only person I thought of that like, asked me to come up with a list. And I was just like, Melanie this game. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, so cute. Nobody else. Um, so I was so happy that you said yes. I was kind of oh like, well, God, if she was that's cool. I'm was so, so honored. Um, and then, yeah, I've just been like, like boning up and reading interviews <laughs> with you oh. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like getting like Melanie Linsky trivia that I can throw out <laughs> just in case, you know. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm really excited about Togetherness coming back for oh, season two. Thanks. Yeah, I just saw it a few days ago. I saw the really? whole season. Really, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. How does that work? So they just say, like, did you do like a screening with everybody or like? No, they, they sent just sent me a you? link and I just watched it with my boyfriend on my computer. That's Which cool. is the only way I want to watch anything. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. just like <laughs> yeah. undercover. Exactly. <laughs> In private. Yeah. yeah, just being able to pause it and be like, tell me how fat I am for oh, real. No. <laughs> like, no. I get really like, I let out all my insecurities on him. Really? Yeah. I guess I, d- I do that kind of too. Like, if I see something and Riley's not there, mm-hmm. like a lot of times, like, I'll, you know, they'll screen something for me, but I have to go by myself and I can't bring anybody with me and then... Oh. He'll like ask me what I think, and I'm like, I think I I I don't know. It's you so can't hard know. when yeah. you're like really in every scene. Yeah, it's like I don't I cannot be the person to say whether this is good or not. Like because you're so yeah blinded by your own stuff, you know, of like not knowing if you're good or not, or if the stuff that you did worked, and and it's just not a normal experience for your brain to yeah. watch yourself people are not supposed to watch themselves right. in that way and you're seeing yourself but you're a character and just everything about it is so odd yeah and just seeing how your face looks yeah. at every angle and totally seeing yourself crying there's just yeah. so much about it yeah. that's just not I know right and I feel like I tend to like my judge is like if I feel better about myself and something then I'm like it's great but that yeah. doesn't necessarily yeah. mean yeah. like I looked pretty good at this one it's great <laughs> yeah. yeah I didn't have that many moments where I like cringed so it must be yeah. this one's gonna be a success um but yeah it's not always like no no <laughs> really isn't no um but I can't believe that I think you're so like luminous on that show and so oh, gorgeous that's sweet and... it's just weird I mean I feel fine about myself but yeah. you know it's just everybody has stuff and it's just yeah it's it's a weird thing to watch yourself I think one of the reasons why I really wanted to talk to you because you're always so honest about that stuff like I listened to your um Mark Marin 
oh, podcast. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's just always nice when you like listen to actresses who can actually talk about those things and like, you know, that you do feel insecure and that sometimes and that you don't always love the way you look and things. Because I think, yeah. you know, I think it's if you for a lot of people saying that would be like, oh, I don't want to draw attention to the fact that I might not always look perfect or, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you're always just like really just easygoing and open about that stuff, which I think we all appreciate very much. Oh, thanks. Nice. Nice to hear that, um, that everybody's going through the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got, uh, in this movie that's coming out a scene where I'm kind of in like underwear booty shorts type of thing mm-hmm. for like a good chunk and doing a lot of physical stuff in it too oh my goodness so yeah so that was definitely like and not a lot of time to prep you know because I was like working on something at the same time leading up to it and then you're just like thrown into it and you're just like hoping hoping that they're filming it in a way that I it's know. gonna make you look good I know <laughs> I'm just like please um but, but yeah but I was actually I saw it and I was like yay thank you guys good, good. I like it. it was like the best <laughs> they're also the best moment. maybe this is just something that I tell myself to be able to live with myself but <laughs> there's also something um you know there have been times when I haven't been super happy with how my body has looked and recently I've had this like thyroid thing which is a real nightmare and like my god just things that are not in my control yeah and I just had to be like all right I'm working mm-hmm. and this is what my body looks like and right. this is a really interesting experiment for me and making peace with myself mm. and truly being comfortable right and also, there's something kind of empowering about it, about like taking your clothes off or being in your underwear when your body looks different to your perception right. of what you want it to look yeah. like. And I just always try to sort of imagine somebody on the sofa who feels like their body looks more like mine than mm-hmm. most actresses, you know, and just being like, okay, how can I look as comfortable as possible right. <laughs> so that that person feels more comfortable with themselves when they see this. And then, so yeah, last time we saw each other was at Sundance, which was super fun. I was Mm -hmm. there for this crazy movie called Swiss Army Man. I want to see that. Which is insane. It's definitely the most insane thing I've ever been a part of, but in a really good way. And the guys won the directing prize. They did. It's so exciting. And you won the acting prize. I was very, very amazing. I was like already so excited to see that movie Mm. but you know I'm just like now I'm like oh my god I can't believe I didn't get to see it it's it's Um, funny was it I can't remember did it get distribution yet or it did yeah yeah. who who bought it Paramount bought it Paramount. Awesome. I Paramount's re- who's releasing my movie this month. Oh, oh my God. that's amazing. What? Thanks, Paramount. <laughs> Thanks, Paramount. <laughs> Paramount, you're great. We love you. <laughs> um, that's so cool. I know. It's the first time that I've ever been uh, at Sundance with a movie where, like, the bidding has started right after the screening. Right. Like, yeah. we were going to have a game of Mafia that night, and mm-hmm. Clea was very excited about yeah. it. Clea wrote and directed this movie. And so we were all, like, talking about Mafia and where are we going to play Mafia? And then she was like, oh, I don't know if I can play Mafia. I think I have to go into negotiations. <laughs> and it's going to make a business deal. I know. I guess I have to go sell my movie for <laughs> $2.5 million. But she didn't oh say it like gosh. that. She was, like, very overwhelmed and excited about it. But she was also bummed out about Mafia. <laughs> but it was so interesting to see that whole process. That process, yeah. Because I've always – one thing – sold before Sundance but otherwise it's always been like a little while later you hear Mm -hmm. like oh something's gonna happen right yeah Yeah. and like then it was just like bam 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 yeah oh that's so exciting to be there when that's all happening I was so happy for her yeah I cannot wait to see it um and yeah, we'll be we'll be Paramount buddies. I know. <laughs> what is your movie that is coming out? Um, it's called Ten Cloverfield Lane, mm-hmm. and it's this kind of thriller produced by J.J. Abrams. Um, Who is that? He's just this guy. He's like he's up and coming mm-hmm. um, producer in the well, world. Good for him. Yeah, I know Making he's doing good. I think yeah. I think he's gonna do good things. Um, and stars this other up and coming um, artist named John Goodman. Hmm, okay. Yeah, who I think shows promise. <laughs> I um, love John Goodman. I know, he's the best. I did a movie with him did years you? ago. What did you guys do? I'm sure. What, what? Coyote Ugly. <gasps> yes! <laughs> Coyote Ugly. 
and he and I were having a very similar experience. <laughs> I bet you yeah. were. Oh my god. Yeah, it was a really strange. It was like my fourth movie or something yeah. like that, and I was like, "What is Where happening am here? I? <laughs> what is happening?" That is incredible. Yeah, and he was just like a real, a real friend. He was great. Yeah, he's so lovely. He was such such a generous actor. Like I remember. Mm. During one scene when it was on my coverage, I just kind of noticed something that he'd been doing kind of the whole time, but I just hadn't picked up on it, which was Mm. every time it was just on me, he would turn up his performance like to 11. Like he would just like, especially because he's supposed to be kind of intimidating. And so if it was on me, he would just like contort his face and make his voice like more intense and just everything, which is the opposite of what a lot of times you get, you know, people when it's not their coverage are like, yeah, I can like sort of half-ass this now. Makes me so mad. I know, I hate that. Have you ever worked with somebody who does something completely different Mm -hmm. on your coverage, like to manipulate you? Yes. You're like, I'm good, thanks. Just do what you were doing in your own coverage. Oh, that's infuriating. It's such a weird power play. I know. I haven't dealt with that much, but the few times that I have, it's just like, it's such a letdown. Because it's like, we're all here for like... The same purpose of making something good. And we have to like build everybody up to do that. You know, it's not about like, I'm going to be really great. And then you guys. Yeah. Um, But yeah, he just like, I just thought that was like the sweetest, just like all of a sudden in the, in the middle of the take, I would just like went out of my head, like just for a (laughs) moment. I was like, that is so sweet. But wait, back in the scene, back in the scene. (laughs) Um, So he's amazing. And then. Um, the other main actor in it is John Gallagher Jr., who's also <gasps> oh, such a sweetheart. Oh, I love him so much. Yeah, so it was like the best group to be. We're stuck in a bunker for a majority of the oh. movie, so it was a good good couple of people to be stuck with for a That's while. That's very fortunate that yes. those are the people. Yeah. I know, I know. It's kind of crazy. Like the whole like, whole like team, I was just like, how is everybody so nice? How did this happen? Oh. It's just such a pleasant so experience. Lovely. Oh, John Gallagher is yeah. so good. I know. Such I know. a great actor. Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping to see. He's in a play in New York right now that I think just started. So mm. I'm hoping to maybe check that out. And he just released an album. I know. So cute. I know so talented yeah and like never ever talked about that stuff i remember when like the um people in in the hair and makeup department realized that he was a musician they were just like mary did you know <laughs> this guy and he's just like blushing in the corner like no 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 stop stop no no <laughs> just like freaking out Aww. oh so sweet but yeah i'm really really excited about that mo- this movie it's like they're so good in it and it's like scary and a little twisted and Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. And mm. it's 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 cool. I'm excited for people to see it. It's a very secretive type of thing because it's JJ Abrams, so we oh, haven't really yeah. been able to talk about it a lot. Um, so I'm just like really ready for people to see it so we can actually start really talking about <laughs> talking oh. about the movie. Oh, I can't wait. It sounds so great. What are you doing now? Are you guys shooting what are you shooting you shooting your show still no, no we don't know um if it's gonna be picked up again yet you don't no that seems crazy to me they don't they have a policy i think at hbo of not telling people i mean sometimes they pick shows up for a few seasons at a right. time i mean i think game of thrones knows that really they're okay. right yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think they're like so we're just gonna go ahead think and, we're gonna, and, yeah. yeah um but but they have not told us yet. Right. But I guess they have so. Yeah, I know. It just seems like such the perfect way to be able to kind of explore yourself as an actress yeah. and as a person and just, you know, like what you're just talking about going through with just changes and, yeah. and just being able to to have a job where you can use all of that. And oh, not it's so incredible. It. It's got to be such a just like luxury to have something like that yeah I have never felt so lucky yeah to have a job I mean and just the kindest people and great collaborators and just you know I really have such a voice on the show it's so amazing not just being able to improvise but having all kinds of input and you know they never want anyone to be uncomfortable and it's just really like paradise Mm. That's so nice. I know, I'm so spoiled. And you do a lot of improv? like Yeah, like a how, lot. Really? When you see the show, like, how much of that is typically improv? Well, it depends because some scenes 
become completely improvised because it gets taken off in a different direction. Right. And then some scenes are are pretty much true to the script. Right. I mean, they write such a great script, but then it's like they're sick of it by the time it really? gets to us. Yeah. So is it a script like a full? Yeah, like a like, full okay, script. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So at least you have like a blueprint of it's what you're going to do. That's yeah. great. You have like a, such a safety net. You could just do the script mm-hmm. as it's written and mm-hmm. it would still be hilarious and right. wonderful and yeah. tragic. But they want to be surprised and they want spontaneous moments and they want stuff that they haven't seen before or right. thought of. And they're also really good at pinpointing what those moments are because improv can get really rambly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Like I think you can end up wasting a lot of time if yeah. you don't really know where you're going with it. Mm. But I, I would imagine on a TV show you don't have that kind of time. No. Really. I mean we schedule. shoot the episodes in – five days you know wow. so it's like and the duplasses will just come in and be like keep that bit get rid of this mm-hmm. bit like move this up a little bit right. you know and just like edit your improv into a scene yeah i mean it's like masterful That's it's crazy so cool yeah and is it um it's like really similar or different to working with joe swanberg like is that more Im- improv? Yeah. Because that's, that's so like complete, like you don't more. even have like a real script. It's more of a just beats and stuff. Yeah. Right? There's an outline. Some scenes, um, he knows what he wants the scene to be about. Mm-hmm. Um, most, se- most scenes. Right. Um, but then some of them are, are a lot vaguer. And that was really, once I stopped freaking out, it was really fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because initially... <laughs> I was like, I, this is too much yeah. responsibility for yeah. me. And I luckily know. in a lot of scenes we had Lena Dunham. Right. Because she's, I mean. Yeah. She could just throw in amazing gems. Amazing. Yeah. And she can really like, she was able to really craft a narrative within a scene and mm. make it a story and mm. help people say something interesting. Right. And I was like, you know what you're doing. Yeah. I guess that's probably my main fear with doing like totally improvised stuff is mm. the people who are really good at it tend to also be writers like they're writing yeah. it in their head and editing it as they're saying it and you know whereas I feel like I'm just going wherever the emotion is taking I me know, I don't that's... know what's gonna happen <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be good or terrible or you know there's no like self-editing happening there because I just yeah. wouldn't know how to do that but maybe you get kind of used to it. Is it? You do get used to it. Yeah. You can feel it kind of, you feel the energy kind of dragging. And, right. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, okay, we're going to pick this up. Yeah. Move on to something else. And Joe is really good, I think, at knowing um, how people's chemistry is going to work together. He's able mm. to put people together in a really interesting right. way that really helps the dynamics of Yeah, it. smart about it. Very smart. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's done so many of those movies now that I feel like he's like, everyone yeah. it's like honing more and more yeah. what he's doing, which is so cool. I did this crazy movie. Oh, which, you know, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Oh, yes, Hunter. my ex-husband was in. Yes, yes. which Jimmy. is how we initially met on that yeah, set. Yeah. It's the first time I met you. It was always, a lot of times we didn't really know what was going yeah. on. I remember, um, yeah. And one day we were doing like a montage scene where it was me and this woman playing Harriet Tubman. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be that we're like having tea at the White House. <laughs> it's already, it's already amazing. Um, and then he just starts have, wanting us to improvise a conversation. And I was like, but it's a montage. Like it, it'll be music and we're just sitting here having tea to, to music, right? And he's just like, oh, I don't know. Maybe we make it a scene. I don't know. You know, like, you, <laughs> yeah. And so I'm literally like, what do I say? <laughs> what would Mary Todd Lincoln say to, say to Harry Tubman? And we start talking about like the Underground Railroad, but we're both like, just like fear in our eyes of like having no oh. idea like what the real facts are in, in this like, you know, like it wasn't exactly the kind of movie you think you need to like do rigorous research for. No. So I, and it, and it got in the movie, like literally I'm like, Ma, Miss Tubman, uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> thank you for coming. Like it's the most embarrassing. Oh, piece now of I need to say, I actually have not seen uh, that movie somehow. I mean, it's I think a Jimmy lot of maybe was fun. Like, yeah. Really? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's a crazy, I mean, you know, a horse gets thrown, as a weapon, you know, oh. it's, 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 it's sure. crazy. There's, it's an entertaining, an entertaining film, but that was, that's definitely my most 
And th- and that's like the fear that I get. Like, and I've had a couple instances like that where I've been asked to improv about something that I don't know about. Oh. And I get so scared. Like I was doing a short film and I had to improvise about like I was my character was supposed to be worked at like an, a high end antique store and mm. selling like really specific pieces from specific time periods. Oh. And I kind of thought like I was like, OK, I'll meet with somebody and we'll like we'll like I'll really get trained on this. And it just sort of never happened. Like yeah. I never got. And then it was like, OK, go just like set. So you're taking this guy through and you're just showing him all the pieces and oh. tell him about. And like I just had to like bullshit my way through it. But the whole time I'm like, my palms are sweaty. I'm like yeah. shaking because I'm like, I have no idea what I'm saying. I know. And of like course there's going to be some asshole watching it. And it's exactly. like, that's from the 16th century, know, actually. I you know? know, and you're like, fuck you. Like, of course it is. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, I feel like I, I anytime I, I know I'm going to be improving now, I'm just like, oh, God. Is there any? Is there anything my character's supposed to know about? Like, please tell me now because I don't want to be surprised. Well, when Clea um, did Argo, I guess Ben told them that they were going to have to be doing some improv. Oh, wow. And so she studied like every year. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, thank God, because. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're thrown in like, you know, this position where something really happened. Yeah. And you're playing real people. Yeah, it's (laughs) so scary. Just feel it out. Yeah, just say whatever. (laughs) You know, you're trying to get through customs. Come on, what would you say? Oh, my God. So scary. Um, But yeah, it's fun. I mean, I, I do, I do enjoy it when, when you're in like the environment where it feels safe, you know? Yeah. And you can really let loose with it and not be worrying and sweating and <laughs> yeah <laughs> and overthinking it. I know. Cause there are some times where I've done movies where, you know, the script supervisor will come up and be like, you added an end. Oh, there's not an end. So yes. you're going to have, and I'm just like, oh, I know. <laughs> Yeah, that's got to be hard too. Like especially after getting used to a show like yeah. that, like you're you're used to just being able to make it your own. I know that would be really tough to go back to that kind of rigid thing. Yeah, no Aaron Sorkin for me. Right, right. I guess. <laughs> I mean, I love. Of course, of course, I would be happy right, to right. Aaron Sorkin <laughs> if, you're happy, if you're listening to this podcast. Um, but yeah, it's a different discipline, right? For sure. Yeah. Which is one thing if it's like perfect. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Like if the lines ha- really have to be said a certain yeah. way, and you can feel that usually when you read, like you know, like oh, this is meant to be said in this exact way. Yeah. But sometimes it's just people being anal for I know. no reason, and that's it's... when it's just like I'm pretty sure nobody cares if I say and or not here. But it's interesting. I saw my friend Chris in the Annie Baker play John. Did you see that Mm-mm. play? Um, oh. God, it was like one of the most perfect theater experiences mm. I have ever had. It was so amazing. But it felt so natural mm. and it just was so kind of lived in and easy yeah. and everything was so and he said every single um and ah and everything was wow. scripted and she was very, very hardcore about when they happened. Whoa. And that they had to happen. So he had to learn all this dialogue with um and then these, make it uh, like things. So yeah. So natural. Man. And God, it was really impressive. Yeah, I want to see that because that's oh, it was amazing. That's got to be. I mean, how long do you have to live with that before that becomes just a part of use? Like, yeah, theater just like it just kind of amazes me in general because I've never done it. Me either. You haven't? No, I don't do you, have any training. Right? No, me yeah. either. Yeah, we both kind of started around the same age. Yeah, I think. yeah. You had more a more auspicious beginning than I had. No. But I think, yeah, I mean, you were, what, 15? I was 15, yeah. Yeah, yeah. my first, like, my first real job in L.A. was 14. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah, so it was So how did that happen? I don't know the story of how you... I, well, I was living in Salt Lake City, that's where Mm -hmm. my family was living at the time, and I was always, like, a performing arts kid, like, I was always, like, dancing and singing and just Mm. on stage and had kind of by the time I was like 10 had figured out that agents were a thing and mm-hmm. that you could be on TV and in movies. And so I started kind of bugging my parents about that. Like I really want an agent. I think I had a friend who did a commercial or something and mm-hmm. it sparked the idea. And so I kind of, um, pushed that on them for a couple years. And then they eventually, when I was 12, 
took me to an agency, just like a local agency and got me signed up. And, Cute. and then I started going on auditions. My first audition was for a guest role on Touched by an Angel. Mm-hmm. And I got it. Oh my God. Even though I was terrible in the audition <laughs> and terrible on the show. Like a couple years ago, I saw it again. I was like, I was really like... Well, you're 12. I was 12, but I wasn't even like a good child. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, how did I get that part? I don't know. But I also, because I think the role was supposed to be kind of a bitchy little girl, like a, you know, supposed to be... It was about this one girl and I was supposed to be the girl antagonizing her Mm -hmm. and I couldn't do it like I kept smiling like and being too like nice (laughs) so they changed it to being her best friend and just like rewrote it they were like never mind like I just couldn't I don't know why I was just like I think I was just too excited to be there so I just kept like you don't want to be mean to somebody you know it's hard to know like is she gonna hate me if I'm mean to her Yeah. yeah yeah so they they like rewrote it and everything which was really nice um and yeah, I just kind of did little jobs like that for a couple years. And then eventually I was like, I'm too big for this town. <laughs> I've got to take it out to LA. And made like a demo tape that was like half an hour long of every little bit part that I had done of like oh. every But it was like recorded on VHS, you know, we had like the double yeah. decker VHS thing. So it was so badly put together. It was like all the static in between each one. And yeah. like and some of them like recorded over other things. And <laughs> so that's what we sent out to agencies in LA was this like horrible Frankenstein demo tape. Oh, and, I wanna see that. Uh, yeah. Oh God. Um and yeah, and then we ended up getting my mom and I ended up getting responses back and I, it's so crazy to think about now. I'm like, wow, we just like Packed up and went out to L.A. That's incredible. It's kind of insane. But yeah, we stayed at the Oakwood Apartments, which is where all the child actors stay. Mm -hmm. Just kind of a really strange place. Um, And I came out and got a soap opera right away. So I had to like move out here for a little while. Oh, yeah. Passions. Passions. Yeah. Jimmy and I used to be super into Passions. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, That was a crazy, crazy show. Um, That I mean, that's a soap opera to be on if you're going to. Well, I guess so. so strange. It's a soap opera to beat all soap operas in terms of just out there ridiculousness. And then I kind of just did pilot seasons for a while after that. I would Mm -hmm. like come out all through my teens and do a pilot and go home and just did that until I moved out here when I was like 20. Oh my God. And yeah. I've just been like, but it's so weird. I I found, because Riley and I have been together, my husband Riley and I have been together since we were 18. Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) I don't know if you knew that, but. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. And the other day, because we've been cleaning out our house because we're getting ready to go to New York for a few months and um, found all these tapes that I had sent him. They were actually like on VHS when I was 18. And it was like me at the Oakwood Apartments, like waiting for my auditions and just the stuff I was saying. Oh, I was so, he thought it was, we were watching it. He was like, this is so cute. And I was like, this is so embarrassing. Like, I was just like, I was like, yeah, so I, I know all the Starbucks in LA because I, I get to my auditions two hours early and I've got to find a Starbucks. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. I was just so, that's all I did. Like, I literally did nothing else but just like wait for my audition and then I would, I would get it and I would learn my lines and then I'd go, you know, figure out where it was going to be and find out where the parking was and like everything was just so, that was, that was like... I don't everything. think I ever in my life have been early for an audition. Really? I don't think I've ever been early for anything. For anything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had to like train myself not to be early for everything. Oh, that's amazing. It's like, but it's, it's like to an embarrassing degree sometimes where now I'm like, no, no, you don't have to be there. Like, especially for parties and stuff. Like that's when it's really like. Oh, I know. No, I'm not going to be the first one there. Like I, I'm sick of always being the first person there. Yeah. Because it's so hard for me. I've got this like itch. If it says starts at seven, I'm like. I know. Seven. I've got to be there at seven. Yeah. Jason has that too. Really? Yeah. And I'm know. like, yeah. no, no. Yeah, no. It's all good. I get mad. Like if I if I tell people to come over at seven and somebody knocks on the door at like seven oh three, I'm like, who? What stranger is this? <laughs> this is somebody who does not know me at all. <laughs> you know? I He's know. like, you said seven. Yeah, that's the thing. Is so I feel like I've done that to people a few times where I'm trying to like be like, oh yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean like yeah. get there right at seven. <laughs> and I try to be. Um, like to tell people like we're having some friends uh, over tonight and I was like actually come at this time because yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's going to be an early night we want to go to bed early yeah. like please come 
Please come time. at the time we're asking <laughs> yeah. you to come. Yeah, if you come yeah. at 10 o'clock, we're going to be like, lights out. So we're yeah. going to be like really specific with that stuff. Yeah, that's um, good. But yeah, it was just so funny seeing like just how obsessed I was with just trying to like get a job and, oh. you know, do pilot season and go to all the auditions and go all the, you know. That stuff is so scary. I I was still living in New Zealand and I got an agent this sweet lady called Susan Smith, and she was, uh, she passed away a couple of years ago, but I, she became a manager and I worked with her until literally the day she died. Oh, wow. She was like in the hospital telling me, did you look at that appointment? And I was oh like, my I did. Gosh. Um, but she sent me my first audition and she said, um, you just make a self tape. And I had no clue. I was what? 16 yeah, years that. old yeah. or something. I was at high school. And I didn't want to ask. It was right. for The Craft, the movie The oh Craft. And um, so I said to my brother, who was like 14 at the time, I was like, I have to make a self-tape. And he was like, <laughs> what does that mean? And I was like, I don't know, but you have to help me. So we got the video camera and it was just the two of us. And I set like this light up that was like <laughs> underneath me, like... <laughs> I, it just was the worst. And then I had Josh reading the lines, but then it sounded like a child. So I was like, don't read the lines. And then, <laughs> like yeah, I was like, you sound like a little boy. He's like, sorry. Like, <laughs> oh, so mean. So then I just was pretending I was hearing someone talk. And my agent's response when she got this tape back, she just was like, okay, I guess I need to explain. Oh, God. Yeah. I have done that before, that word. Like, you don't have anybody to, to I used read to do, with, like, yeah. do it on my laptop with the little camera and then, like, yeah. like look at myself in the mirror and, like, record the other dialogue. Oh, God. And, like, play, you know, play yeah. the other dialogue and my own voice back to me. Like, something that people don't realize, the strange things we do sometimes for auditions. Like, oh, God. Especially self-tapes are such a weird, like, how many times I've taken, like, a giant halogen lamp and like turned it on its side yeah. across a table and then you're like standing on <laughs> yeah. some weird thing just to try to get the right angle and then like yeah it's always like becomes this all day thing because there's all these technical complications oh I know it's the worst and it seems like oh yeah it'll be easy to self-tape instead of going in like I'll just do that and that way I can control it myself and it'll be great and then it becomes this like nightmare process it's the worst. Where everything goes wrong and you're just like, why? <laughs> Although Jimmy is the master of um, ma- making self-tapes for really? people. He's such a good director. Mm. And some, he's very, very specific. And I used to get really annoyed at him because I'd be like, I've actually read the scripts. <laughs> like you would always get in a fight. But he would give me, he'd be like, I don't know. It looks like this. It looks like, uh, you know, you, you sound whiny or something. Oh, and I'd be yeah. like, well... All right. right. <laughs> like, but he made myself tape for the informant. He made myself really? tape for win win. He made wow. my tape. I'm trying to think of all the other ones. Like for a while, everyone was like, wow. "You're gonna get the job if he does your yeah, if he does your tape tapes. with you." That's good. I know. Yeah. No, Even it's... when we broke up, my agent was like, "Is there? <laughs> is it weird if you ask Jimmy?" <laughs> I was like, oh, "It's a bit weird." Oh my god. I think now it would be fine, but right. there, yeah, for a minute. He's not coming yeah, over to do a right, self tape. Yeah. Right. That's so that's so cool. I mean, when you did the tapes for those, because those were also both like specific looks and stuff yeah. too. Like did you like like for the informant, did you do a whole outfit or were you no, just like as you? I didn't even really think about it. Yeah. Like I remember I was so excited because I was like, Oh my god, I'm playing Matt Damon's wife. Like right. that's so amazing. Yeah. Oh my god. And then I was like it's the dorkiest version of Matt Damon. Right. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, that makes so sense. Like, it's not like movie star Matt Damon. Uh, I never thought about that that would be kind of a letdown. Yeah. yeah. It's so fun. Like the parts are so fun. But yeah, yeah. That I've is... just always been so like charactery. And right. suddenly I was like, I'm one of the actresses who can be Matt, Matt Damon's, Damon's wife. <laughs> like this is so glamorous. And then I was like, oh, they literally put a man's <laughs> wig on me and cut it into like a hairdo. And I was like, all right. I see. I see how oh this my works. God. Um, 
How long have we? I feel like we've been talking for like I know. a long time. It's good. It's I really could, fun. I, like I could talk to you forever. I know. I feel like we're just having mm-hmm. lunch with no food. I know, with no food. Just water. Exactly. Just <laughs> like what actresses do. Oh, this was so fun. It was so it was fun. So nice to talk thank to you. Thank you for talking to me. Oh, thank you. And hopefully we'll get to like hang out more without I know. microphones and not in a sound studio although this was really cool too it was really fun you can be the first person to come to my one of my parties one of your par- yeah i'll invite oh, you to oh, parties can- <laughs> now so we can hang I out can be, i'll be you won't be mad be if i'm early arrival. no okay i'll understand okay yeah thank you you can oh show gosh. up that's so sweet yeah. um and thank you to the talk house for having yeah, us so nice so what cool a nice time bye bye <laughs>This is Nick Dawson from TalkHouse Film, and you've been listening to Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Melanie Linsky on the TalkHouse Film podcast. This episode was edited by Elia Einhorn. For more filmmakers talking film and TV, visit thetalkhouse.com slash film. Subscribe to TalkHouse Film and TalkHouse Music podcasts on iTunes, where you can find all our previous episodes. And while you're there, please rate and review if you can.